what would you say is something that most people would not um and we might have touched a bit on it before a little bit but you know from your perspective you know being the child of a military service member um what would be something that most people would not you know now, I wouldn't say identify with, but wouldn't know, right? Because, again, your upbringing is different, having to, you know, PCS around and move and all that stuff. Um, what's something that folks wouldn't know, I guess, you know, off the bat when it comes to being a military kid? You know what I mean? Compared to, like, other kids. It's just like, hey, most folks think, like, hey, you know what? You have your life ahead of you. Life is great. You go to school. Yeah. Then you graduate. Then you go to college. And, you know, everybody kind of assumes that this is kind of how things go, right? Um, yeah. And coming from the military perspective, obviously, there's some changes in there. Uh, what would you say is one of the things that you wish people would understand more, I guess, you know, when it comes to either interacting or understanding, you know, what life is like for a military child? I would probably say, like, you know, when people move, they might think, oh, yeah, you're just moving, so it's a new place, a new adventure, or whatever. But it gets to the point where it's like, you know, it's like, it's, uh, I don't know if depressing is the word, but it's saddening. You know, you got, you have to understand, like, these kids aren't, they're not like the regular people whose parents have a business or whatever, and then the kids fall in the footsteps and they work their way. It's like, okay, I'm moving here, I'm moving here. And, like, it's harder for us to really find ourselves because we're being exposed to different things here and there. Someone owns a car dealership. Someone owns a real estate firm and an insurance company. So it's like, instead of being one person who was always taught this one thing, we're taught so many different things that it's hard for us to find ourselves and, and uh, really, you know, find, you know, what we want to do in the future as well. So, no, I, th- I think that's a, that's a great perspective and a good point there, which, you know, again, if, if you don't know, you haven't been in those shoes, right. You wouldn't really know, um, you know, and everyone's different too. Like, Someone from the time they're four might want to be a firefighter, and no matter how many times they move and what people tell them, they're always going to be that. They're always going to, and they're going to do it. Mm-hmm. But someone might be like, oh, someone might tell you something, oh, I want to do that, or maybe I'll do this, or whatever. So, what would you say to someone out there who, you know, maybe watching this who is, you know, the child of a military member or a veteran? Uh, they may be older, maybe their relationship is not as strong as it should be. Um, obviously I know you and your mom, so that kind of, you know, gives me an insight there, but what would you say to someone who maybe doesn't have that relationship, right? Maybe they had some issues, things have happened. There may be some strange, you know, moments there. Um, they may be a little bit older, but at the end of the day, your parents are parents, right? And you want to have that relationship. Uh, what would be some of the advice you would give or advice or something you would say to someone out there who might be saying, Hey Q, you know, that's great that you got that relationship and you're copacetic there. But, you know, I, don't, I just don't see eye to eye with my old man. You know, what I mean, he's kind of I don't really understand him. He does stuff. He he served and we don't talk about stuff like that. Um, what would be your, I guess, approach to that or advice you would give for someone who may be trying to find a way to build a stronger relationship with their, you know, veteran parent or military parent? I think that, well, I would just tell him, like, have a talk at a table, just sit down. And then you just got to tell them, you know, how you feel and stuff. And depending on the parent, they might be like, well, you know, you're this or that or whatever. Or they might understand it. And hopefully they would understand it. If they don't, then, you know, you got to look back at it and be like, okay, well, how else can I present it to them? Maybe in, maybe this time I was kind of attacking and saying you're doing this wrong and this wrong and this wrong. Maybe I should say I want I think that's the biggest thing because I know I've had uh, conversations with um, both of my parents, and uh, I think let's sit down, all electronics off, devices off, uh, no distractions. Let's just knock this conversation out, whether it be one hour or four hours. Because mm-hmm. it's hard to do, but it's really the you just got to take that on, like literally just head on, like. Mm-hmm. And uh, parents definitely is not easy, and you you really don't know until you're a parent. I'm sure you know you can mm-hmm. live with that with kids, and you know some stuff, but you don't know all of it. Mm-hmm. And then plus you're juggling, you know, you're juggling the job, and then you're juggling. Okay, well, do I have PTSD? And mm-hmm. then my mom, you know, 
if something happens and they're triggered and then you're coming at them with all this stuff and it can be overwhelming mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. even though everyone all the little kids want to believe it their parents aren't mm-hmm. aren't uh, mm-hmm. superheroes and it's not everything's not perfect even though they might be yours mm-hmm. your superheroes so I think it's really like you know you, everyone's different so everyone's gonna have to put that message out differently mm-hmm. but yeah I think definitely just sit down and you know this is what's gonna have to happen for us to have you know a healthy relationship or you know telling them you know i want a better relationship mm-hmm. than what we have because this is just not this isn't what i want and then any parent is going to be like you know okay well no parents not doesn't want a relationship with their kid right go uh, well the ones that live together so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes yeah sometimes people don't but the ones that have you in the house no parents mm-hmm. are just you know i don't want you to a relationship with you and they're always going to want to improve it yeah um, especially if you bring it to their attention i think that's the biggest thing <clears throat> even with my dad you know uh, i'm not going to get into detail or anything mm-hmm. take up but uh you know i had to bring it to his attention because he didn't realize it and the way that people grow up that might be different from the way your parents grow up might be different than what from how you want to be treated by them mm-hmm. and uh what happens is you know they grow up a certain way so that's how they parent they parent how they parented were parented and yeah sometimes it's something different and you just have to express that to them uh but what are some of the things you're working on now um just for those folks uh that may be uh looking um at you know what, what q you know goes on to do outside of seeing your mom eat more mres and being subjected to whatever we go into what are your what are your kind of plans that you're looking into now um well i don't know we could probably really start a show about like eating mr or mres because that was you know it's like a comedy <laughs> it's like hold on i've got the camera recording like it's a movie mm-hmm. but uh so i'm a senior in high school so i'm just trying to i gotta graduate and then after that i want to do uh some real estate school mm-hmm. and do some uh social media work and, and try and be in that um I can't think of the words I want to say, but being some type of social media influencer because mm-hmm. um, even it could even be like, even though I'm not necessarily directing it to only military kids, but mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. I've struggled with <clears throat> whatever has happened throughout my life. Uh, social media influencers have helped me, you know, get through that. It just if they just put a smile on my face and then okay, well, it gives you some motivation to do whatever you have to do. So that's something I want to do. And then um, from there, pursue my passion of cars. But other than that, that's about it. Definitely, you know, what you guys see all the time isn't always what we see, what I see, because, uh, you know, there's other stuff that goes on in life. So she's working, she's being professional. Well, she's not professional with her kids. You know, it's family, so it's a mm-hmm. different type of professionalism. Right? Yeah. So I just, I will just say, you know, thank you because she always taught me uh, she taught me some good life lessons as far as like I said sorry I just got distracted but as far as I said um, integrity that's my biggest thing I always thank her for because it's always like own up to it own up to it own up to it I know it took a while for me to start owning up to it but you know getting there and appreciate all the support and work with me even though I've been a little bit of gotten a little bit of trouble here and there but (laughs) Stuck, stuck with me for a little bit, so I appreciate it for being my rock. Awesome. Um, so I, I definitely appreciate you, brother. You know what I mean for hanging out, um, and sharing a little bit about your story and talking a little bit about that. Um, I know we had a schedule, so it's good to kind of have this conversation. But definitely more to follow um, and other conversations to ensue from there. But thank you for your time. Thank you for your. Thank you for you know, sharing your reality, you know, what life was like for you from your perspective. I mean, hopefully that helps someone out there who might be seeing this either for themselves as, you know, a a child of a military service member or as a military service member themselves or a veteran trying to understand like, hey, what's going on on the child side of the house, whether they're 18, 10 or 20 or 30, you know, there's a reality of putting down the stigma of not challenging and understanding what is it you need from me. And there is no time limit of when that can start. Even if you are, if your child is 20 or 40, there's a way to try to find, you know, a, a common ground there. So 
Um, right. I appreciate you hanging thank out, you. brother. Good luck to you on your yep. interview today. Um, and yeah, we'll reset. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Likewise, appreciate you having me on. So indeed, indeed. So for everybody else, this has been one on one profiles on audacity with Quincy, uh, growing up military, an eighteen year old story. Uh, thank you for your time, and we will be back. All right, brother. All right, appreciate it.